Hello. Hold on a moment. Oh. Welcome back to the laboratory. They said it wouldn't happen. It did. Who are they anyway? That's what you've got to ask. Um, welcome. You'll notice those of you who are old hands at this intriguing lecture series, you'll notice some changes. Can you see what's changed about the laboratory? Hmm, let's think. Well, Basil's still here. I've had a lot of letters for Basil since the, we stopped doing the original lectures. Lots of you have been asking, is Basil OK? How's Basil? I miss Basil. No, not so much missing me, I have to say, but certainly Basil very much missed. So here he is, Basil. He's looking bright. He's bushy. His greenery is vibrant and beautiful. And Mmm, he smells delightful, like a spaghetti bolognese waiting to happen. So, uh, welcome, Basil. Are you having a nice festive season? Mmm, mmm, oh, good, good. And have you enjoyed lockdown? Mmm, yes, well, he, 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 no change, really. I suppose if you're stuck in a teapot, uh, there's very little uh, opportunity to, uh, uh, to engage with other people anyway beyond the window. But you've had some fun, haven't you there, Basil? I can see you've uh, some of your leaves wilting a little at the top there through excitement. What else has changed? Basil hasn't changed. The potato, the wonderful potato receiver. That's still here, but this time I've sat it on top of my favourite hat. I'll show you my favourite hat. Look at this beautiful hat. It's a top hat. And sometimes when I'm going to my very important uh, meetings, I put my hat on uh, on top of my my uh, my tie here. Uh, that's not changed, has it? And uh, I think it uh, lends me an air of dignity. <laughs> there we go. So at the moment, I'm using that hat to prop up a potato instead of <laughs> perching it on a potato. Uh, there we go. And... A new addition to the laboratory. This is Norman. Now, I don't know if you can speak gnome or not, uh, but what Norman was trying to say there was, uh, happy Christmas, what's going on? Um, well, uh, it's very straightforward. What we're going to do today is we're going to uh, talk to lots of people about snowmen and snow ladies and snow anything really, anything made out of snow or indeed made out of other things. So it's quite an open book, really, today, Norman. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it would be better if you went on the floor because I need all of this space uh, at the laboratory. You, 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 well, you just wander over there, maybe, Norman. How about that? Good. What else is different? Well, you remember, uh, it looks different. The room looks different, doesn't it? And what appears to be a table tennis table has appeared instead of the beautiful oak table that we saw last time. And I have moved the laboratory. Listeners, dare you, dare you understand. I've moved the laboratory up into a secret new part of the towers here. And uh, we've got a little bit more room around us. We've got light and we've got this magnificent table. Don't think for a second that it's a table tennis table just because of this magical white line. This is what's uh, very useful for some experiments. Uh, and maybe we'll see later how that might uh, that might be the case. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. right. It's been a while, hasn't it? So you you may forgive me if I'm a little rusty. Uh, what happens first? Let me let me let me come to you. Maybe you can uh, enlighten me. Uh, let's see if the potato clock still works. It's not a clock. What did I say? Potato clock for? You do remember though. Hopefully, we made a potato clock, didn't we? That actually worked. This is more exciting still. This is my potato receiver. Right? Can I hear you? Say yes. <laughs> Good. Now, what, what happens next? What picture? Oh, pictures, yes. <laughs> yes. Now, thank you. Uh, some of you have... Oh, I got a bell. Uh, some of you have sent in some beautiful pictures of snow creatures, shall we say. Because snowmen, snowmen is not really the right word for what we make out of snow, is it? We can make men, Ooh. or we can make ladies, or we can make pigs, or rockets, or cars, or anything we want. It's the beauty of snow. You can make it into anything you want, um, I guess. But we'll see, won't we? Uh, so somewhere over here, in the depths of the laboratory, I have my artwork. Now, I have to tell you, 
I've got Norman here, and Norman is all I've got in terms of help. All my every year, all my elves just my 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 every year, and they just after Christmas they come back looking a bit sleepy, and they all pile into this big kind of straw filled uh, room and just for about a week flat out. Useless. So Christmas at the laboratory is very quiet. No experiments are going on. It's just sleepy elves at the latter half of Christmas and nobody at all uh, at the start. So I've been able to get no work at all done. They've gone north, apparently, to help somebody else. How dare they? So uh, my, things might be a little frantic uh, with me trying to uh, figure out what goes where. Uh, I, I've got no, no help at all other than Norman. Norman, where's the artwork? Yes, you're right. Thank you. So uh, let's have a look. What have we got here? We have got um, two. <laughs> Excuse me. I've got a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a cough. Uh, so normally I'd put my hand over my mouth, or of course I'd cough into the crook of my elbow. Uh, I'm on my own in this room, and I want to talk to you. So if I don't always do that, don't think I'm being rude. Basil. Right, so let's start with not a snowman, not a snow woman, a snow cat. Look at that beautiful snow cat. Elsa sent that in. And look, you can see the beautiful snow cat. What I really like about this pretty snow cat is, look, we've got these little tiny whiskers. And can you see it looks like they're made out of twigs? Oh, that's just what you do, isn't it? If you are making a snow cat, it's got a very festive Santa hat. Where's my Santa? Oh, no, I don't need a Santa hat on. I've got my tie on my head. Uh, so a lovely Santa hat and some lovely ears. I don't know if they're made out of carrots, perhaps. Do they look like they're made out of carrots? I can't tell, really. Uh, and some little paws and this curly-whirly tail. I don't know what that's made of. It, it looks edible to me. Um, and not to be outdone, we have this... Uh, it's lovely. Look at this lovely pussy. This is uh, from Auntie Faye. And look at it. So cute and cuddly and fluffy. Oh, so two snow cats. I like that very much. So thank you both very much indeed for those. Gratefully received at the laboratory here. And when the elves come back, they'll be most delighted to see those. They do like a nice, a nice cat. Uh, so what have we got now? We've got a, a, a snowman. Goodness me, Ethan, you've used such thick paper. I, I thought it was too stuck together, but it isn't. This is great. So this is for Ethan, and this is more of a traditional snowman. Look how dignified he is. He's got the top hat on. Let's put the top hat on as well. Uh, there we are, a bit of dignity. As we're discussing snowmen. Bah, 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 bah. So look, a big top hat, and uh, I think it's a lovely blue scarf there. Fantastic. And some arms. Look, he's got some buttons on his waistcoat. And I think, are they, is it stripes on his trousers? I'm not entirely sure. Now, if I said to you, that's an American snowman. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? It's not an American snowman. Surely not. It's not an American snowman. I will tell you all soon. But have a think. Why might I say that's an American snowman? Oh, oh. Let's see what else we can find. Uh, da -da -da -da. So many to sort through, dear listeners. Right. Oh, are you ready for something beautiful? I'm ready for some. I'm always ready for something beautiful. Basil's something beautiful. Mm, look at this, though. This is a beautiful snow lady drawn beautifully by Eloisa. I love it. Thank you so much for that. She's got lovely, lovely hair. Look at me peering around so I can still see the picture uh, and you, and hopefully you can see the picture too. Look, the snowflakes falling as well. Beautiful snowflakes there. And uh, look, she's got a head and she's got a, a body and she's got some arms and legs and some buttons again and a carrot for the nose. Oh, lovely. I'd say that's another American snowman. Lady, lady. And Dr. Pete would not be complete without some contribution from 
the enigmatic G-Dad. I'll take my top hat off. No, I won't. I'll leave it on for this one. Aha, look. Look at that beautiful snowman again in the American tradition. What does he mean? And we can see an amazing top hat. That's more of a stovepipe hat, I think. And look at that long pointy carrot nose. Fantastic. I love it. And that looks like a really warm, fluffy scarf to me. Very nice. Very broad shoulders, this snowman. Look, he's been working out. Oh, yeah, he's been working out all lockdown. He's pumped. He's ready for anything. And look, he's got these uh, arms pointing down there. Uh, he does look uh, like in prime condition. Very happy as well. I like a happy snow person. Uh, but you don't, people don't make grumpy snow people, do they? Sat there. Ugh. So, good. I think that's important. Happiness is so important, dear listeners. My head's getting hot in my top hat. <sighs> What's next? Wow, we've got a pair of wonderful snow creations coming next. Oh, we have, we have, we have. And this is a brother and sister special combination. Pardon? Yes, I know. Yes. They don't need to know that. We're all right for time. He's worrying about time. He thinks we'll spend all day doing this and he wants to go out and play later. But uh, we've got loads of time. Fear not. Um, right. This is from Caleb. Wow. Look at that. That is a British snowman. Mm. He's got a hat. My hat on in celebration of the hat -ins. Always important to have a hat on in the snow, isn't it, to dear listeners? Uh, hat there. He, you can see he's got a carrot nose and he's got a lovely fluffy red scarf and he's got some lovely twig pointy arms there and two little boots on, I think. And then he's got buttons and two eyes and a smile. I don't know what they're made of. Maybe they're made out of coal. Maybe they're made out of raisins or peas. Who knows? You can make it out of anything, can't you? But beautiful. Thank you for that, Caleb. And if we flip it over, flubbity, 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 flu. Ah, oh, look at that from Ivy. What an amazing snowman. Again, in the British tradition. Now, you'll notice this hat is substantially different. A top hat, you recall. Very tall, flat on top. Uh, a big peak around here. This, I think, dear friends, is a bowler hat. Much more of a rounded top to the bowler hat and less of a dramatic uh, brim. It gets very hot in that hat. It is a hot hat. A hat that's hot. Whew. So uh, here we can see a lovely bowler hat. With a big happy face here. Oh, he's had a lot of mince pies, hasn't he? Goodness me. Uh, little arms and little legs and feet there. So again, a beautiful snowman. Thank you ever so much for that. Uh, I think, is that it? Oh, no, it's not it. We've got our own contribution from the laboratory. This, dear friends, from Eli, is a snow mummy. Ah, very specific. Not a snow lady, a snow mummy. Absolutely beautiful. Look at her golden hair shining like a snowy angel. Uh, we think maybe made of beautiful fine straw. We can see an elegant little nose made of a carrot. We can see some eyes made of coal. A little smiley mouth there, maybe made of some smaller, finer grade coal. We don't know. Uh, lots of buttons straight down the front there. And this snowman, dear listeners, in the British tradition. And we can see arms at either side and some big boots. I think some big boots from the boot collection here at the laboratory. That's the main reason we had to move, you know, uh, because we, we had a great big room and it began to fill with all the, the shoes and boots that we had here from the elves and the head elf. And uh, we've been re resignated now to these new premises. So uh, it's all good, isn't it, uh, dear listeners? Right. <clears throat> Sorry, that seemed to take quite a while, didn't it? Uh, this was only supposed to be a very rapid uh, view of these things with a view to uh, viewing some snow viewing men viewing. I'm saying viewing too much. So let's move on and talk about what we're going to talk about today. And you will notice a few things that are different. First, why have I got a bath uh, with taps here? Strange little bath. Uh, this is what I've chosen to put my chalk in. I made it. These are little taps here. It's a little bath. It holds all my chalks in. But the other thing you will notice 
is this magnificent blackboard. Ooh, not using the little one anymore. This is a big one. Look what I can do on this big one. Snow men. Boom. Big. It's a big blackboard. And when you get closer, it gets bigger. Look, so it's just all the whole room is full of blackboard. <laughs> so uh, that's good because we can we can talk about a few things now, can't we? Now, you will remember, you know all about snow, of course, because when we talked about weather, we talked about snow, didn't we? How it starts off as frozen rain, as ice way up in the sky, and then it starts to fall, and it gets into a warmer part. And the warmer part, it kind of uh, becomes a bit more liquidy, and then freezes again. And we get that beautiful six-fold symmetry. So, one, two, three. Oops, that's not very symmetrical. So we give us our, our six-fold symmetry. One down there, two, three. And each of those is one, two, three, four, five, six points. And then around that, we get these funny little shapes, don't we? Whee! Boing, 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 boing. Good. So every one of those, completely unique. Very, 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 very different. And it's very important that you select the right kind of snow for your snow person. So if you have it when it's very powdery, it doesn't stick together. Boo! What you want is it's when it's melting a little bit and it kind of clags together really nicely and forms a very solid snow person. Now, snowmen have been around for a long time. You can imagine it's very easy to think of our, our ancestors living in caves. <clears throat> eating plants out of the teapots. <laughs> Don't worry, Basil, I won't. Uh, and uh, seeing it snow ooh, ooh, and thinking, what should we do with it? And maybe forming snowballs. I like to think that cavemen had snowball fights. I think that's a logical thing to think. And maybe the idea came that they could make these beautiful statues out of snow. And it's a, it's a cheap building material. So I think people have always made snow men and women and, and creatures and things. I think it's always happened. I, maybe they didn't make snow rockets or snow skyscrapers or snow aeroplanes. But uh, I think everything else, they probably did. So that's an intriguing thought. But of course, we don't know, do we? We've got no way of knowing. The earliest uh, time we can we can see a snow person in a picture is from, uh, where is it from? I, I, I can't remember now. It's, it was in a very old book. So a very old book showed one. And uh, we know from history that before then, snowmen were made in the Middle Ages. That's a long time ago. And people would walk around the village and they would go and look at everybody's snow people and go, oh, that's very nice, very nice, very well done. Now, I don't know. I've got some interesting facts about snow people. But I think, first of all, I should start uh, by talking about the difference between a British style snowman and an American style snowman. Now, have any of you figured this out yet? I'm just checking to see. I've not had any, uh, any emails relating to this. Uh, oh, hold on a moment. What's this? Let me See, my telephonic communication device doesn't always recognise me when I've got my uh, my hat on. So let me just check. Uh, what have we got now? Oh, marvellous. Thank you. There's a, you're right. Oh, magnificent. It's all to do with the way you make it. Now, here we go. Uh, let me erase it. Where's my erasing device? Elves! I haven't got any elves. I haven't got the elves today. Oh, shocking behaviour. Let's start with a British snow person, which traditionally looks like this. Head, body. OK? Now, American people, in general, go like this. Head, upper body, lower body. And that's a weird little fact. I didn't know until I looked it up the other day in preparation for this. Bizarrely, I do prepare. You wouldn't think, would you? So this is a British one, and we write UK here. Hmm? And this is the American one, USA. So I think that's really interesting. When we here in the United Kingdom make a snow person, traditionally, we have made a big ball for a head, and an even bigger ball for a body. We put one on top of the other, done. When our American cousins have a go, they make a head, 
an upper body and a middle body. And then they put arms in this one. Bop, 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 bop. Buttons in this one. I don't really know what they do with the bottom bit. We, bah, 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 bah. we put buttons all the way down and arms. Now, make what you will of that. But next time you see a picture of a snow person or a real one, you'll know then if the uh, sculptor has been influenced by the United Kingdom or the United States of America. Great. We've learned something. We've learned something of so limited value, you will never be asked about it again. But if we have a look back at all of the pictures that we had, we can see who's been influenced. So Eli's very much gone for the British approach. Uh, Caleb and Ivy approach. I'm not judging, by the way. Eloise and uh, G-Dad have definitely gone for the American snowman. The American snowman. You've got to have three balls. You can't have two balls. You've got to have three balls. Ethan, again, you've got the American snow person. Now, when it comes to snow cats, it's British. There's a head and a body. Boom. So I think that's really interesting. And why do you make snowmen the way you do? Is it because of where you've seen snowmen on television programs? Or is it the way you've been taught by your parentes? Uh, who knows? So uh, I think that's really interesting. I've got some facts for you and a story to tell. But hmm, I'm a little thirsty. Shall we make some tea? <laughs> yes, let's make some tea. Head elf. Oh, hold on. I I've got my tea ready here. Here we are, the tea tray. Hopefully you, you remember the tea tray. That's not changed, has it? So here's my hot, ooh, hot water. Um, and what have I got today? Some right treats. So uh, yes, last night at the, the laboratory, we had sausages with mashed potato and peas uh, for dinner. And we had some peas left over. So I thought I'll have those because I like peas. And I think peas. P.T. <laughs> P.T. would be marvellous. A spot of P.T. in the morning. What? 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 There we go. Peas in there. I've got my special uh, special prodding teaspoon here for the P.T. Green P.T. I'm going to squash a few of these because I think it's better to let the juice, the juice out. Uh, give it a nice flavour. A little tomato. I always think a little bit of uh, red is nice. I'm going to use my little knife to chop the tomato. Now, the problem here is it's a toy knife. And you'd think even a toy knife would be able to get through a tomato, wouldn't you? It won't do it. It won't do anything. It's that safe. It won't work. Elf! No. I've got a spoon. Stab it with the... Ow! Oh, it's hot! It's been in the PT. It's going well, isn't it, dear listeners? Here we go. I'm through. I have severed the tomato. It is bisected. That means it's in two pieces. In we go. Man, this is going to be a magnificent feast. I can't wait. Red and green. And then I think to finish it off, I found these. These are called jelly tots. And mm, do you like jelly tots? Oh, mm. I wish I hadn't eaten that now because I'm going to try to need to talk to you about eating a jelly tot. But it's very rude. So I'm going to put them in here. I'll leave those because I like them. A little prod. Do you like jelly tots? Oh, I think they're amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'll leave them there. They may well eat, I may well eat them later. We'll see what happens. Right, on with the lid. And where? Where's the cup? There it is! How good is that? Right, shall we see what's happened? It looks like water. Uh, this may require a little more colour. Let's just see. What do you think it's going to taste of, dear, dear listeners? I vote for Ning. No, it's got a it's got a subtle hint of pea. Hmm. Good. I think it needs a bit longer to stew. It's not the worst thing I've made. That undoubtedly was that weird uh, chilly smoky thing I had for the volcanoes one. I'm going to put that over here. Ooh. I'll have a little bit more of that later. Uh, perhaps when I do my experiment, what an exciting experiment we've got lined up today. An experiment to do with snowmen, I hear you say. How can you do that? Ha, 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 ha. Wait and see. Wait and see, you dear friends. Now, I've got a little sheet of paper here to remind me. Something I really wanted to tell you uh, was a chap called Michelangelo. 
Now, Michelangelo lived long, long, long time ago in Italy, and he was a very famous painter and sculptor, and he made lots of beautiful works of art that you can still see today. And when he was 19 years old, that's about my age, uh, dear listeners, when he was 19 years old, he was asked by the king of Florence, the king no less, to make him a snowman. And he did. And that's one of the one of the first pieces of uh, commissioned art that he did was to make a snowman. So when you're making your snowman, you're following in a very fine tradition. It doesn't mean that it's a it's a very common thing to do. Oh no, no. Making a snowman is an amazing, amazing thing to do. I also need to tell you about the good people of uh, of Zurich. Uh, Zurich's a place in Switzerland. And the reason I keep referring to my paper is there's a very complicated word in it. Now, we like complicated words, don't we? So uh, where's my erasing device? Um, <coughs> incidentally, you will have noticed I've got one of these. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're such fun. It makes sitting amazing fun. Because normally sitting is quite boring, isn't it? But if you can sit and whiz round, oh, the time of the day just passes by and you get no work done at all. It's tremendous. Here's a complicated word. It's so complicated, I'm going to use a yellow piece of chalk from it. Here it comes. S E C H S E L A U T E N. Now, this is German. And because it's German, this A isn't a normal A. It's got a little pair of dots, like two tiny eyes, called an umlaut. So it says, Sexerlauten, I think. Anyway, Sexerlauten is the third Monday in April. And what people there do is this amazing celebration that marks the official end of winter. And they make something called, I need to write this one down as well, a boog. Not a booger, a boog. <coughs> So the Boog is a giant snowman made of cotton. And what they do is they make this giant, giant, massive snowman made out of cotton. And they put dynamite in it. Uh, this is real. And dynamite, of course, boom, it blows up very easily. So they put dynamite in it and they parade it through the town. And uh, what the people parading it do is throw bread and sausages to the crowds of people around. Imagine being there. Oh, you get to see a giant snowman stuffed with uh, dynamite and people are throwing sausages at you. Oh, it would be great, wouldn't it? Oh. Anyway, <clears throat> what they do then is they put it on a fire. And what do you think happens? Boom! It sounds incredibly dangerous. I've got to see it. So uh, when it blows up, then winter is officially over. So you have to detonate the boog. I love that story. Uh, it's true. And I, I, I need to go and see it for myself. Absolutely. Uh, I've got another fact for you. World's largest snowman was, in fact, a snow woman. There you are. It was a snow woman. And guess how tall she was? No. Taller. Taller. I'll tell you. She was 37.21 metres high. That's as high as if you take eight double-decker buses and stack them. Eight! Eight double-decker buses! Holy mackerel! Because a double-decker bus is about eight metres high. You should know that. Um, good. Well, I think then we're about ready to get on with our experiment. Now... For this experiment, I really wanted to make lots of snow so that we could make our own snowman right here in the laboratory. Uh, but for various technical reasons, we've not been able to do that. So uh, fortunately, we've got a substitute. Now, this could get a little messy. Maybe it won't. I've never done it before, so I don't know. So my substitute I've opted for is this. Now, I said last night we had sausages, mash and peas here at the laboratory for dinner. And uh, we did buy a few extra potatoes. And I am going to make these into potato cakes later. I do like a nice potato cake. So I have washed my hands. They're very clean. And what I'm going to do now, because we don't like to waste food here at the laboratory. Oh, my goodness me. No, never. So what I'm going to do is make a snowman out of mashed potato. So he's technically going to be a potato man. I don't mind that. 
No, I think this will work. So all I need to do now is uh, a little bit of rearranging. Do hold on, dear listeners. It's so difficult, this, without uh, the proper elf support that I'm used to. Uh, I just need to put these items in. Oh, my goodness me. Why don't we have elves to do this work for me? Goodness. Right, here's my little plate. Could be messy. Might not be. Let's find out. Now, I shall we go British or American? I'm thinking British. So we'll have a head there. Look at that beautiful head of a snowman. Splat. It seems to be working so far. How amazing this is. Uh, normally, of course, for a snowman or a snow person, you'd roll around the snow, wouldn't you? And it'll kind of pick itself up a bit. So, uh, oh, it's, it, you know, it's it looks okay, but it's got that little tremor about it that means it might fall over. I think I've done it. Magic. Uh, so what do snowmen need? They, they need something else, don't they? So we need some eyes. So let's see what we've got here that could make eyes. I've got a couple of jelly tots. Oh, they make good eyes, don't they? <laughs> now, I've got a couple of things we could use for a nose. One of them is this massive dead long chili. So let's see how a chili looks on our snowman. Wow, look at that. What a noble nose that is. <laughs> or I've got a mushroom. Oh, I've got a mushroom for a nose. What do you think of that? Mm, I've got a mushroom for a nose. Mm. Let's go chilli. Should we go chilli? Yes, let's go chilli. Uh, thank you, mushroom, anyway, uh, for your service to mankind. Uh, poke in the chilli. Got quite a big nasal cavity there now. Can munch that in there. Marvellous. What else do we need? We need a cheery smile. Ah! Uh, I've got some peas. I admit, this isn't the usual uh, kind of things that we would use, but uh, I think well, you just use what you've got, don't you? If you don't have coal lying around, who does have coal lying around these days? Uh, you have to just go with what you've got. And at the laboratory, we've always got peas lying around. Always got peas. Not lying around, literally. That would imply we live like a uh, filthy creature. But yes, a lovely green smile there. Lovely. Uh, arms, what should we use for arms? I'm sure you can guess. So we've got a couple of sausages left over. And I think if we insert those, we've made our mashed potato man! Yippee! Oh, doesn't he look great? What do you think, Basil? Yes, I agree. He looks beautiful. He doesn't have a hat. Thank you for pointing that out. Maybe we'll give him a little mushroom hat. There we go. Doesn't quite look right, that does it. Well, never mind. Uh, so here's our little snow person with uh, the sausage arms. Uh, looking a bit uh, slopey there. Let's sit you a bit further upright. Uh, a nice chili pepper nose. What's going on here? A bit armless. Right. Uh, I don't know how long that would last under normal conditions, but next time you have sausage and mash, maybe. You should present it to people like this. Here's your sausage and mash, a bed of peas, and just dollop gravy over it till it falls apart. Ha <laughs> ha, that would be amazing. I'd love that. I'm a bit potato-y. You excuse me while I wipe. Good. Right, we need a name for this snow person. So uh, please uh, send any suggestions in and I'll read them out next week. Next week. Ha <laughs> ha, or on next week. <laughs> Excuse me. Next week, <laughs> again, next week, we are going to be doing something else very important and very festive. Snow people, of course, very festive. But next week, we're going to be talking about the Christmas dinner. OK, doesn't sound fun, but there's lots I need to tell you about the Christmas dinner and the various things that go into it. Uh, and I've got a fantastic experiment you're going to love. Oh, definitely. So. What I need you to do for next week, dear listeners, is send me a picture. <laughs> Coughing again, excuse me. Just have a bit of my awful tea. That always helps with a cough. A bit of PT. Hmm. That's dreadful. So, um, <clears throat> it really is bad tea, that. So I'd like you to send me a picture of your Christmas dinner. 
So uh, I was thinking maybe you could you could either draw a circle on a plate, uh, you know, a circle on a plate, that'd be a foolish thing to do. Draw a circle to be a plate on your piece of paper. I don't need to give you ideas. You always have better ideas than me anyway, but you could have your circle here. You could have your knife and fork here, and then you could draw on it what you have for Christmas dinner. So here's your uh, bird's eye potato waffles, for example. Uh, here's your egg. Uh, here's your parsnip. Um, what else do people have for Christmas dinner? Mm, jelly tots, a big pile of jelly tots here. Uh, good, and of course the, uh, the, the mountain of mashed potato. So if you could do that, draw what you would like or what you had or what you think should go on a Christmas dinner. Send that to me here at the laboratory. I'll show out the wonderful artwork. Uh, we'll talk about what happened over Christmas. Uh, there's lots of fun planned here at the laboratory. Maybe the elves will be back, but they'll be asleep in the basement in a big pile. <sighs> anyway, I'll see if I can wake one up to help. Uh, other than that, have a splendid Christmas. And I look forward to seeing you back at the laboratory a week today. Farewell, dear friends. Farewell. 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 Farewell.